If you really start looking, there's a top 10 list for just about everything. Of course, David Letterman had his, ESPN counts down the top 10 plays, there's even a book of the all-time stupidest top 10 list. And during a year when I've tried more products than ever, why not narrow it all down to what's really the best? in a first ever Emily Awards Top 10. I've got the products. The staff here at Beauty Broadcast Headquarters has been working hard on the numbers. So let's get to it. First, from foundation to setting spray, the Top 10 Face Products of 2015. Hi everybody, welcome to the Emily Awards for 2015. I can't believe this is the eighth year that I've been doing this. I am Emily, these are my awards. I really love sharing the top makeup products over the past year with you. And for me, lots and lots of thought goes into these videos and you deserve it. As my viewers, as people who tune in to me day after day to watch, I want to make sure I am giving you the best information I can. I don't take this stuff lightly. I hear from so many of you that you not only look forward to the awards, but you base a lot of your purchases off of them. And there was something somebody said to me last year, and I always look for feedback toward the end of the awards, you know, how can I improve them for the following year? Is there anything I can do differently? And someone was saying, you know, they've grown so much, it's almost a little overwhelming. You know, all of the information that you get per video, just so many categories, so many favorites. And they were basically asking me, um, what would my best of the best be, you know, for face products? products or for eyes or lips, just considering everything. And that's kind of been in the back of my mind in my slow cooker, as my mom would say, um, over the course of the past year. And I was thinking, you know, will I change up the awards? Will I do it somewhat differently? And many of you said you still want multiple videos. So I'm definitely doing that again this year. But I almost wanted to pinpoint the favorites even more definitively. I'm going to still give you on my blog, that's beautybroadcast.net, a favorite high-end and a favorite drugstore for every single category that I've always had and you know I've added to over the years. But for my videos, I want to really break it down to a top 10. So considering everything, whether it's drugstore or high end, it's all being considered, what would be my top 10 face products? What would be my top 10 eye products, lip products? So it's my hope that that makes this extra helpful. It makes it extra clear what the most impactful products were that I've used over the year. And I don't know why I did this to myself because this is really hard, but within the top 10, I've challenged myself to make it not something that's in no particular order, but something that gets better with each number. So we actually work up to a number one, like top product in this case for face. And let me preface this top 10 by saying, I feel like for face, it has been the year of the face related palette. Maybe it's a bronzer palette, a contour palette, a blush palette, this or that. So many things in palette form. And simply within this top 10, I have three different face palettes that made it in. So that's kind of interesting. But number 10 is actually a face mist. This would be my favorite face mist that I have used over the year. And I've really tried a lot of them. So many brands have come out with something like this. And my favorite one is really my Glossier Soothing Face Mist. This is a rose water spray. I think it's so refreshing. I think the rosy scent is so super accurate. It's just very uplifting, something about it really lifts your spirits when you just spritz it on throughout the day. So it's nice in that respect, but I also love it immediately after my makeup application because it takes away the appearance of powder. It makes everything look much more skin-like and I just love that. I also love just the quality of the mist as well. So many mists will kind of splatter too much on your face at one time or you can see little droplets. This has always been a very fine mist, um, an absolutely dead on wonderful rosy scent. So I love this stuff. Number nine, is a powder and this has appeared in the Emily Awards for many years and this is my L'Oreal True Match Pressed Powder and there are a couple key reasons why it made it into the top 10. Number one, just the texture of the powder. It feels very rich. It feels almost a little bit creamy when you touch it. Not that kind of dry chalky texture that you might notice with a lot of drugstore powders. And number two, it's so versatile. I feel like this works great as an on-the-go touch-up type powder but at the same time you could apply it with maybe a flat top kabuki style brush and get absolutely powder foundation type coverage out of it. I really adore products like this that I feel like I can recommend and two different people could try it with two different motivations for using it and they could still have great success with the way it goes on. Um, also there's a massive shade range in the True Match line so that's always great. It's going to have a matte finish on the skin but it's not going to look overly dry, cakey. Like I said this isn't like a chalky cheap powder. It really is nice quality. Number eight and this appeared in my Emily 
Grammy Awards last year. It's my It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Plus. It has an SPF of 50, and I think this is really just the creme de la creme of CC BB cream type products. I love that it actually has coverage. It's the kind of thing I was just applying it the other day and thinking, you know, I can slide this on so easily with my fingers. It does not take a lot of work to blend it out. My skin looks really fresh and nice when I've got it on. It actually does kind of smooth over some discoloration that I have in my skin. It's really, to me, one of the very few CC cream type products that is a true two-in-one. Most of the time, unless I'm extra, extra dry, I don't feel like I need to apply an extra moisturizer with this, so I'm really getting the benefits of hydration plus coverage. Fabulous sun protection in there. I've also enjoyed the illumination version that has come out and the bronzer for different purposes, but this one still all around, I think, is my top dog for the CC creams. <laughs> Number seven, the first face-related palette is making it into the mix, and this is from Laura Geller, and it's the Baked Color and Contour Palette. This is such a fabulous product. It combines three really amazing things from Laura Geller. Half of your pan is the Baked Bronze and Brighten, which is an awesome bronzer. It just really warms up the skin, gives you a great look of health. I just, I absolutely love that product. And then I cannot say enough about the French Vanilla Highlight. This is an ideal highlight for people people who want their skin to have a little bit of a glow. The French Vanilla Highlight packs in the teeniest bit of coverage. It's just like the perfect product for, I think, skin of all ages, people of all ages. It's a really great thing. And then there's a blush in here as well, which actually turns out to be the most glowy thing in the palette. I'd say it's a beautifully pigmented warm pink. And so everything in here, I mean, this makes the ideal travel face palette. You're getting three products in one, each of them extremely effective in their own way. So that's all. Awesome. Number six, a drugstore holy grail product that has been in my Emily Awards many times before, and it is my Rimmel Lasting Finish Foundation. Um, this has been repackaged over the years, used to be in a squeezy tube, now it is in this glass bottle. That was not a welcome change for me, but still I'm happy to see that the product on the inside seems to be the same and something I know and love, and a rare foundation that I feel can work for so many different skin types, so many ages. I've said this before, but my mom who was in her 60s when she wants you know more of a fuller coverage look on the skin something a little bit more than just a tinted moisturizer this is what she likes to use I have loved this on my skin I feel like it doesn't over dry it doesn't look unnatural on the skin it blends in super easily but it gives me really great coverage and in a drugstore marketplace where I feel like the prices of foundations are creeping up and up and up um, this one is like a really fair less than ten dollar price tag so I absolutely love it. Thank you, Rimmel. This is a great product. Number five, another palette, and this would be specifically geared toward people who want blush and highlight and want highlights that really, really glow. Ever since I got this palette, I have just been so impressed, and I find more and more ways to use it, and it's my Becca Afterglow palette. Guys, this is packed with products in Becca's regular line. This is not just full of limited edition things that you'll fall in love with and never be able to find again. It's a great kind of like try-me palette. And while the sizes aren't huge, it doesn't take a lot of any of these to get the desired effect, you know, on the skin. So for example, today I've got on this blush. This is a blush called Flower Child. There are two blushes in this palette. So you've got one that's more neutral, one more pink, and then you've got these three highlights to play with. So I like to use either topaz or rose gold as sort of a blush topper. So directly on top of where I put my blush, I use the rose gold today. And that's giving me a really nice glow. And then I can use the gorgeous moon stone, which is really bright, really packs a gorgeous highlighting punch. I just like to pinpoint that like maybe just right in here or just under the brow or on the cupid's bow. These are very intense highlights. I really love the liquefied versions of the shimmering skin perfectors from Becca as well, but I think what took this one over the edge for me this year was just how much I love how these particular blushes can work in harmony with these highlights and just give a really pretty look to the face. Number four, 
four, I would say it's been the year of the dark circle for me. I mean, I have had more darkness to conceal this year, I think, than ever before. So I've got to give it up to the product that has, no matter what, been able to handle that discoloration. This has won multiple Emily Awards in the past, and it is my Benefit Erase Paste in the shade Medium. I mentioned recently how the shade Medium, I think, is really key because it is so pigmented and so peachy, so it's extremely corrective. It can handle any amount of darkness on the under eyes. This is also a really great coverage product on any sort of age spots you might have on your skin. Um, pinpointed darkness, this tackles it really nicely. In tone, it's very similar to the Bobbi Brown Corrector in Bisque. If you enjoy Bobbi Brown products, that's going to give you a similar effect to this. What tends to make this come out on top for me is that I think it's a better value. You get more product here. Um, also, I find this to be the most, like, kind of moisturizing uh, corrective concealer on the under eye area. I'm getting more and more dry in that area as I get older. And so I just love how this gives coverage without making that area look really crepey. Number three, we're getting into the top three. I feel like I need like the lights to come down like on American Idol or something and things are getting really serious now. But my number three product is a loose powder. This has been recently one of my probably my most tested product. This comes at a very high price, but it does something very special and I think very important to me in my makeup routine. And it is the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Powder. I have continued looking for dupes for this and I'm not gonna stop looking for dupes for this product because this is like a $60 powder and it is, I think, the most wonderful thing for setting that under eye concealer. The thing about this Benefit Erase Paste is that it does leave a somewhat tacky finish, and I am one who really likes to eliminate that. I don't want to look dry, but I don't want to feel that tackiness and feel like my products, you know, lifting away or not having good staying power. So what can I use to lock in the concealer? This really is the key for me. This is a super ultra lightweight, the most lightweight powder I've ever used, so I actually like applying it either with a beauty blender sponge or um, a flat foundation brush. Stay away from anything too fluffy or it's going to get super airborne and maybe not actually go where you want it to go on your face. This is one of the only powders that I honestly think looks better later in the day. Like as I continue to wear this powder on my skin, on my under eye area, as the day goes on, I see fewer fine lines. Another key area that it works great in is around, you know, the areas where you see a lot of pores. So your nose, the sides of the nose. I'm learning that just not any powder is going to do on the under eye area because so many look worse as the day goes on. They might look at their best when they're freshly applied, but then as you have facial expressions and contort your face around in any number of ways, they start to show up more. So this is serving the function I need, which is to take away tacky texture from the skin, give the area a more perfected look because it's mattified, but not look dry. My number two product, incredibly low cost, but incredibly effective. And to me, I see this as a dupe of something that was prominent in my Emily Awards last year, and it is my e.l.f contour palette. If you haven't tried this out, this is really a contouring palette that covers all of its bases. You've got a couple of light tone shades here, but then you've got your cool tone matte contour shade, and then a little bit warmer, lighter shade that makes a great bronzer. These powders do pop out, so if you have an e.l.f. blush palette, maybe there's one of these shades you don't use as much, you could pop in a blush shade, really customize it to the way you want it. And I've honestly enjoyed e.l.f.'s cream contour palette as well, but in terms of something where I feel like I'm genuinely getting use out of every part of this, this is great. And it performs and swatches so much like my Smashbox contour kit, which pretty much has like these three shades in it, so it's really an incredible value if you've had apprehensions about the quality of e.l.f. products. These are nice, smooth, wonderfully pigmented powders. I think you'll be very impressed. My number one pick for face products this year, um, I mentioned liking products that can perform differently for different people. I love a good multitasking product that can be used in a variety of ways. This year, my top favorite is the Cover FX Custom Cover Drops. Um, I believe this is the only Cover FX product I have used I am hugely impressed with this. I have used this so much, maybe just a drop or two. I love how a little bit goes a long way. You can add it to any 
face product you might want to put on. So we're talking a moisturizer. You could add coverage and make your favorite moisturizer a tinted moisturizer. You could add um, anywhere from like one to let's say four drops. That's kind of how they outline it. To add light coverage to fullest coverage to any product. Maybe you've got a foundation where you just thought, gosh, I'd love this if it just had a little more coverage. Add a couple drops of this. The shade range is massive. I've got this in N35. Um, you're just going to use a little dropper and I like to just mix it with my fingers really with whatever I'm going to use. Guys, I have used this alongside countless foundation formulas. High-end, drugstore, there has not been a single one that I felt like, oh, it's not blending well into that or it's creating some sort of issue with the consistency. It's just like it swoops in. Once you've mixed it all together, you wouldn't even know anything additional had been added, but then you put it on your skin you're like, Thank you. There's the amazing coverage. I have a high standard for coverage. I have dealt with melasma. That's really pronounced discoloration on the top of my cheeks. When people say something is full coverage, a lot of times it's not. Like to me, you know, full coverage means absolutely the ability to cover everything. And I can say with certainty, this can get you there. I would say this year, what's putting this over the top of my Estee Lauder maximum cover foundation is just the versatility with this. You know just the thought that, okay, I can take a couple drops of this, I can mix it here and there. Not that you can't mix the Estee Lauder with other things, but I feel like the drops of this are thinner, but yet very, very potent. So I really think this is one of those worth the money products, one of those where you get it into your collection, you're going to find yourself using it in many different ways. At least I do myself. I love this so, so much. So thank you all for watching the Emily Awards for Face top 10 edition. So my top 10 products for face. If you want to see, again, all of my categories all laid out with high-end and drugstore, each and every one, please go to beautybroadcast.net. Everything will be clearly lined out there for you. And my next installment of the Emily Awards will be for eye products. So I will see you then. Thank you for watching. Bye. Can you dance? <laughs>